So to keep things basic, the film look is coming from actual film that had to be developed. Um, and our digital cameras have a can't really replicate that. So we have to do some things to make digital footage appear as it was filmed. And we are going to be using the Cineon log to accomplish this. So step number one is we're going to have to shoot in log. I have a A7S3 shooting in S log 3. And just in case anyone is wondering, here are my color management settings. Our color science is DaVinci YRGB. Our timeline color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And our output color space is the same as timeline. And as far as our settings, we're at 4K, we're at 23976, and we have 10-bit S-Log3 coming from the A7S3. Once you have your footage all imported, we can go ahead and start the film look. And the only reason I do have these black bars is because I added it just for the dramatic effect. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit Alt-S if we don't already have a node. So with our first node, that is going to be at the end of our sequence, but we're going to do it first. So with node number one, we're going to go to effects. We're going to go to color space transform. We're going to go ahead and apply that. On input color space, we're going to go ahead and put what we did. So we shot in S gamut 3 cine and the gamma is S log 3. Now for our output color space, we're going to leave that the same. Output gamma, we're going to go ahead and select Cineon film log, which is right there. Okay. So now that we did this, we can go ahead and put this at the or near the end of our sequence or our node tree. What we're going to do is hit Alt S to make a node after our Cineon film log. On this next node, we're going to go ahead and hit LUT. We're going to go to Film Looks. And what we're going to be working with is the Rec. 79 Kodak um, 2383. The D55, D16, D65 is just different color temperatures. I'm going to go with the D55. So once you have your, so once you have your color space transform and your film look LUT, you're going to leave it off to the side. You're going to go ahead and click on node number one. You're going to hit shift S instead of alt S to add a node before. So with this new node number one, we can go ahead and start fixing everything to make this image look great. What we could do is let's change the label to uh, primary adjustments, P adjust, however you want to label it. With S log three, we overexposed by 1.7 to two stops. So with our primary adjustments, we're going to go ahead and start with the offset wheel and just move this until we find where we like it. All right. After our offset wheel is done, we can go ahead and now tweak the gain gamma lift scrollers until we find again what we like. All right. So that looks pretty good. We can always change it later. What we're going to do next is we're going to fix our color temperature. Um, if you want a more accurate reading, you can click this little eyedropper white balance right here. Go ahead and click on a neutral gray or a white surface and it'll get you a more accurate representation of what it should be. But what we can also do is I'm going to reset our temp and tint. I'm going to push this a little warm. I actually want kind of a warm image, maybe kind of a little green tint in there just a little bit, um, and then also bump some saturation in there. So now we have kind of a warm, instead of that cooler look it originally had. Okay, just from those few adjustments, I'm gonna to toggle node number one on and off, and that's starting to look pretty good. So what you could do next is I'm gonna hit Alt S. I'm gonna go over to, I'm gonna sharpen this image up a little bit since we are S log three and it could just use a little sharpening. So I'm going to go to my blur. Actually, we should label this just so we don't get lost. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this little tab very slightly down. 
Now, if you want to accurately represent the film look, you could add grain. You could just leave it even. You could actually make it blurrier, which would be more accurate. Um, you could just do a whole bunch of stuff with however you want to do it. But for this instance, I'm just going to sharpen it and uh, go about it that way. So I'm also looking at this image and just wondering what else I can add to it. We can basically do a small S curve, see how that looks. Okay, with our node number three now, we're going to go ahead and go to our curves. I'm going to make a dot there, and I'm going to make a dot there. And pull this up just ever so slightly, pull this down ever so slightly. And let's toggle that on and off. Small change, more contrast, looks good. All right, and honestly, just from those three adjustments, we have a basically done image. For this part, we're gonna do a little more, a little more involved process. Same, same color space transform, same LUT, same steps, but we're gonna go into HSL secondary. We're gonna do some effects to make this image look a little better. So once again, we're gonna go to effects, color space transform. We're gonna put that on node number one. We're going to set our, oops, we are going to set our parameters of what our camera was shooting. And then we're going to choose Cineon Film Log in our output gamma. Then Alt-S, add another node. We're going to add the LUT, the same LUT, in the Film Looks folder. The D55, that looks great. Close our effects panel. So now... I'm going to hit node number one, shift S to add a node before it, and we're going to enable this, P, just, all right. So, in this image, looks pretty good already, but we can always do fine tweaking. So, using the lift, gamma, gain, and offset wheels, you can go ahead and do it how you'd like. Okay, so just from those primary adjustments, we went from that to this, that to this. Just like before, we can, if you really want that film look, you can add grain and actually blur the image, not sharpen it. Um, but in this case, I'm going to sharpen it and add an S curve. <laughs> So sometimes when you're working with Sony colors, the skin tones can look a little off. I don't know if it's because it's so accurate or it's just off because it's off. I don't know. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna make his skin tones look a little more natural and rounded. So to do that, we're gonna make a new node. We're gonna go to we're gonna label this. Let's just label it skin. Then on this new node, we're going to go to the qualifier. I'm going to turn on to see what I'm editing. I'm going to select his skin. I just want a skin. I don't want anything else in it. So I'm going to use my luminance, saturation, and hue sliders to get exactly that. All right, so again, we can always tweak this later if it doesn't work out. Um, I'm going to add just barely negligible blur radius and denoise, just ever so slightly. All right, so once we have that, now we're going to come on the same note. We're going to come over to the FX panel. We're going to look for color compressor. Now, this is a little finicky. You're just going to have to mess with it. Once we have our color compressor added, we're going to hit this eyedropper. Now, whatever color you select here, it's going to even out all of that color. So if you choose, uh, let's see. So let's go ahead and choose this between this pink cheek and this kind of darker lower cheek. I'm going to choose right in the middle of that. Okay. So now we're going to come over to the effects panel. We're going to compress this hue. Now, if you do this too much, you see it's going to turn, he's going to lose all the detail in his face. If you're going for just one solid look, that's fine. You could do that. But um, again, you're just going to have to mess with your settings. So it's a slight difference, but 
Here's off, on, off, on. So you can see it just it just evens everything out. What I'm also going to do on the same node number four is I'm going to come over to the gain exposure. And I'm just going to bring his face up just a touch. And you can always tweak these scrollers how you'd like. Alright, so a fun thing that you could do if you're shooting 10-bit is... You can also do an 8-bit, but it just might be a little more splotchy. Is you can change colors of things. So let's say I didn't like his shirt color for whatever reason. I'm going to go label. Let's just label it shirt. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to the qualifier. We're going to tap this little magic wand, see what we're selecting, select a shirt. And then we're going to change the luminance, saturation, and hue sliders to make sure that we're only targeting his shirt and nothing else. All right. So let's say for whatever reason, I wanted her shirt to be green, right? Um, I'm going to come over to the offset wheel since we qualified his shirt out. And I'm just going to start tweaking this. Now, if you push this too far and you have too much blur radius and denoise, you're going to notice there's going to be like a... It, it's because it's feathering it out with the blur radius. So if you don't have blur radius right here, like if you max this out, you see how that line gets more feathered out. Um, that's why you only want not as little as you can get away with. Um... Or else he's going to have that halo around him. Um, but what you could do is you can change the color of things if you'd like. And it's good to know. If you do this with 8-bit, you're going to notice some artifacting. Because there's not nearly as many colors to work with as 10-bit. Uh, if I didn't like this yellow sticker up here, what I could do is I'm going to make a power window. This is a new node. So let's label this sticker. And let's start off with a power window. Um, I'm gonna the reason I'm doing a power window is because I don't want to touch any other yellows that are in my scene I just want to touch the yellows that are Where I want to edit specifically Okay, so This yellow I'm not really liking it You could either use the qualifier or the hue versus sat You just have to figure out which one's gonna work better for you. So let's go ahead and use hue versus sat We're gonna go and select a nice piece of that and let's just go ahead and drag it down and see what happens so that actually looks pretty good if we scroll out you can see it's not nearly as it's not there at all if i turn it on and off so as far as the film look is concerned this is pretty much done one thing to note is if you want something to look cinematic you're gonna have to do it on set meaning lighting and all that other stuff you can only do so much in post to make something look cinematic but if you have the the composition right and you have good lighting and you have that cinematic composition then that's what's really gonna sell your image because if you take a look at this image versus this image it's basically the same grade but one just looks one just looks cinematic because these two these two samples have the same grade but obviously one looks more cinematic and that's just due to the composition i hope everyone found that useful and goodbye.